That didn't sound good, did it? Oh, no, about you. <laughs> Sounded really educational, didn't it? Anyway, I, I don't, I'm really struggling with what's going on in our country, and I'm not going to dwell on it and everything. Uh, you know, you see all the stuff that's going on, and, and unless you got your head in the sand, you know, <laughs> it's pretty much out there. But my biggest concern is, is from, from my standpoint, is, and I'm doing it, and I don't mean to, is to get caught up in it. To get to the point where you feel anger or animosities and stuff like that. And, and I have to pray a lot about it, but it's, it's, I want to know how to live free. How to be free from all this. You know, I know what's going on. The, the world's going on. Even when David wrote Psalm 37, the world was going on. But he wanted to be free. You know, and, and, and the same way with, uh, you know, because if you notice, he had a lot of problems. He had, you know, uh, he was the king, but also he had a lot of enemies out there from without, within, and all this stuff. Remember, he was chased down uh, and tried to be killed by King Saul and, and everything. And David really had a struggle, a lot of struggle, but he wanted to live free. He wanted to be able to, to have that, that free life. And... Though, though we're in this world, and Terry was, and I was talking about it this morning, it continues to get worse, it seems like, every day. Every time we turn around and think, well, this week will be better, you look out and it's even worse. You know, something else is going on. Something else is going on. And, and we have to be careful not to get so heart calloused heart I guess I say heart hearted toward it because if you're, you're not careful it can also rob your spirit life and that's that's the main thing about it is if we're so focused on all this that's going on we lose we can lose our our, our, our uh, uh, I don't know a heart for the Lord I love the Lord and that's never going to change I, I, I fell in love with Jesus back in 89 and I'm not going to change but sometimes it kind of, you know, kind of floats back if you're not careful. And so we have to keep him at the forefront of our lives. Put him out in front of us. Follow him. Allow him to, to care for us, to love us, to, 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 uh, to uh, guide us and provide for us. And all these things, just lean on him. The steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his way. When he falls, he will not be hurled headlong, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand. Those two verses right there are so important to us that, that we should, you know, if, if you, whatever version of the Bible you got, they should be uh, almost memorized. Because the Lord establishes. You know, I, I plan my life. I'm going to look at a couple of things here. Uh, but I plan my life every day. We plan our lives. You know, uh, you and I get up every morning with our, our, our plans to do. But in Proverbs 16, 9, it says, A man's heart, a man's heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his sta steps. You know, I plan my life every day. I've got plans for this afternoon. I've got plans... You know, it, it doesn't mean we can't plan, but what we want to do is if we have a heart for the Lord and we allow him to, to guide us and we allow him to, to uh, uh, have total control of our lives, then when we are walking, we will be on the same path. And that's what he wants. He wants us to be on the same path. And, and like Isaiah said, you know, his ways are right. You know, they're higher, they're right. They're just, they're perfect, and ours isn't. We're driven by sinfulness, selfishness, and all this stuff. Pride, everything. That's how we drive. That's what we're driven by. Because we are in the flesh. And most of the time we're driven by the flesh. <coughs> and, and so with that, as he guides our steps, you know, we have to allow him to. We have to, to, to let him. And that means if I allow something, I have to let go. I can't hold on to something. If God has me going over here, I can't hold on to what's over here. I have to let go. And then I can freely go this way. 
so you you know that's what that, that's what God's desire is that's why it says a man the steps of a man are established by the Lord here's the problem we fight those steps we do don't you know that's why we sin <laughs> you know we do things we, we're always going to Psalm 48 14 for the for this is God our God forever and ever he will be our guide even to death now you can look at that even to death as two ways even to death at the end of our lives he's going to guide us he's never going to let go he's never going to quit, quit guiding us he's never going to do this it's, it's until we draw our last breath or even in the possibility of death you know he's going to guide us even if something happens to us you know talking about not just dying out fading out his old age but something else he's always going to guide us you know, God, I would rather be led by somebody who knows what they're doing than by somebody who doesn't. That's why I don't get in, like I've told y'all before a hundred times, I don't get into the Dr. Fields and the Oprah's and, and Dear Abby's and the horoscopes and all that stuff, all this, the fortune cookies, all this man-made stuff, I don't get into I don't listen to it. I don't read about it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't apply to me because mine, I want to be guided by the one who knows. I want to be guided by the one who is perfect. I want to be guided by the one who is everywhere all the time. And that's God. That's the only place, that's the only person I want to be guided by. Now, we'll, I, we'll go to people, we'll say, uh, you know, what do you, what do you think about this? I know Christina will, well, well, I got to go up to somebody's house, they're having a crisis and they want to talk to me. I'm like, you ain't qualified. Talk about my daughter. <coughs> you're, you're 19, what have you been? What kind of world have you been in? You've been cushioned all your life. You know what I'm saying? What kind of, what management you got, you know? But she was her savior at that time and everything. Yeah. So, but you know what I'm saying. And, and of course, I always say that a lot of people don't care about finding solutions to the problems. They just want to, to complain about their problems. You know, but, but in that, even in our spirit life, we don't want to, to, to uh, uh, get rid of some of the things that we do in our lives that holds us back. We want to uh, uh, carry them with us and then complain that it was somebody else's fault is why we are who we are today. But he says here, steps of men are, are, are established by God. Now, I want to look at that word established just for a minute. Established means it's pre-planned. See, God told Jeremiah, I have a purpose and a plan for you. There's not a person that God says, I don't know what to do with you. Now, I feel like he does that sometime with me because I'm not who I am. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 boy, he, he's a knucklehead. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but God, he, he, he sets out a plan. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And with that plan, that purpose, that is established for us. That's established for us to have a better spirit-filled life and draw closer to Him. God's path for us always leads to Him. Our paths always leads to us. Well, what's in it for me? You ever heard that? What, 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 I don't know what's in it for me. What, what am I going to get out of this? I don't want to do this. I don't want to. I mean, why, why do it? It's, it's, it? I know what's going to happen. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Well, it's because I, I don't want to do it. You see, it's because of me. You ever had somebody say, well, I, don't, I, I know it's going to be bad. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't want to meet that family. I don't want to go out here and all this stuff. I'll have a rotten time. And then you find out you had a good time. You enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but, but what I'm getting at is he, is he plans everything. He has it all mapped out for us. Now, that doesn't mean we're robots, all right? In other words, we can't make our own decision. We can. But when we make our own decision, what he wants our decision is to be lined up with him. How do you line up with him? How would you line up with, 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 uh, with, with God when it comes to, uh, to your life? How would you line up? How would you know? How would you even know that my, what my next step is? Hmm? 
Word, prayer, speaking his face. Let me tell you what, the closer you get, the more you know him. When I met Christina in El Salvador, I wanted to know everything about her. And I told a bunch of lies about me. Because <laughs> if I would told the truth, she wouldn't be sitting here today. You said yes. <laughs> she, uh, she got whiplash. <laughs> she got to go to the chiropractor. Now get that neck back in there, that yes. But, but what I'm saying is, I want, why do I want to know her? I want to know everything about her. You know, it's that loving I want to know everything. And see, that way I know that we're in tune with stuff. The first thing I admired about her, and I'm not going to brag about her or anything, or, you know, all that stuff, toot her horn. First thing I know is how much she loved the lost people. Every time they had a campaign, she was out there, and she would, and when they had that film and they talked to somebody, she I always watched her, because I, I didn't watch anything else but her when I met her, okay? That's all I'm saying. But anyway, she would have some, uh, somebody over, usually to talk to the ladies, so she'd have a lady over, and she would talk to them and everything about, about their relationship with Jesus and all that. And, 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 and I was fascinated by that, the church and everything. And as I got to know her, I wanted to know everything about her. I'd ask her crazy questions and my Spanglish and all that stuff, and I did what I could do. Why? Because I wanted to know. Why is it today we don't really want to know God? We don't really want to know what Jesus wants from us. We don't even want to know who he is in our everyday lives. That's why we don't spend time in his word. We don't spend time seeking his face because we don't really care. You see, a lot of times we want God as a bail bondsman, if you will. In other words, when I get in trouble, God, get me out of here. And then he gets us out, and then we go back to our normal ways. You know, but, but when we seek his face, want to know everything that we can about him. Now, remember, he knows everything about us. He created us. He created our DNA and everything. He knows everything about us. He knows our heartbeat. He knows our thoughts. He knows everything about us. But we have to know more about him. And the only way that I can know what path he wants me on is to find out. That's why we wander in our lives. We just wander around. And then we wonder why God's not close to us. Well, you ain't sought him. You haven't figured out what to do. You haven't even asked him. But that's what it's, and then, then he looks here, he said, in the same verse, he says, and he, now I don't know if you're all he is capitalized, that he is capitalized, but that means he is God. Um, and it says God delights in his way, his is a lower case. In other words, the, for the man who is, you know, who is following the Lord, is steps that he has, God takes delight in helping you establish your life. We do our kids that way. Don't, you, know, you know, when, when your kids are small, you, you help them out. You get all ready for whatever they're going in. You know, the first birthday party they go to when they're a little, little bitty thing or kindergarten or stuff like that. You go out and you look and, 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 and they meet friends and everything. It delights. You're helping them. You're establishing their life. You know, you're, the, you're their world at that time, so you're establishing their life. You teach them different things, and it delights in you, you in the way that you're doing them. You know, now, he delights in his way. Why would he delight in his way? Because he's following. When you follow the Lord Jesus and you're doing the best, you know, you're following him, that means you're on his path. That means you are, you are uh, seeking as best you can to follow him. That is delightful to God. But when you're out on your own, it is not delightful. That's why it says in his ways. Because the guy who he's delighted in is the one who is obedient to the steps that God has established, if that makes sense. Don't ask me to repeat it. Because his desire 
Again, his desire is to lead us to him. And that's all. And, and I would tell you right now, like Paul said, when I was a child, I did childish things. But as I grew, I put my childish things away. Paraphrasing, I don't have it exactly memorized. Uh, the more you grow in the Lord, the more you'll know his steps he wants you to take. And also, the more you will desire to walk his steps. You know, there, when I first got saved and, and didn't have a clue about Jesus or anything else, I was just, you know, I didn't know what to do. But as I grew, I still don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? But, but, I, but I, I, I'm doing things now that I didn't do then for the Lord. And I'm not doing things. You know what I'm saying? I put those, some of that stuff away and I'm more focused on him. See, he's more important to me. Back then, I was still struggling. Oh, man, it was like self, God, and, 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 and you know, it, it's a lifetime struggle. It's a marathon. It's not a, it's a journey. It's not a, a sprint or, a, or a, a day in a park. And in that, as we grow, as we mature, our desire matures. Now that doesn't mean age. I'm talking about your spirit life. You know, just because, you know, I'm older doesn't mean I do better. My thing is, you can do better at whatever age. Does that make sense to you? I mean, you know, well, he's, well, look at him, he's older now. He must be a really mature person. Then you, you know, you're like, after you get to know, nope, 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 not, not one. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. Um, but he established the ways. He established them and he delights in his way. God delights in the way that he does us. You know, the way that he established us, he delights that we are following him. To me, that, to me in my own, my own heart, my own mind, Is there anybody in your life that when you get near, you want to put a smile on their face? Nobody? Okay. What I'm saying, the reason I say this is when I was a child and I'd go down to my memos and I was excited to see my memo, I would, I would always try to do something to put a smile on her face. You know what I'm saying. I want to be happy. I'd, Mama, I love you, and hug her, and everything like that. And what'd that do to her? Smile on her face. You know, or do something for her? Smile on her face. Little things to show your love? Smile on her face. It's easy. Do you think following the Lord puts a smile on his face? What does delight mean? It brings you happiness. It brings you joy. And so when, when, when you're obedient to God, it's as if he's putting a, you're putting a smile on his face. I mean, figure, you know, figure. You know, in other words, he's happy that the way you're doing. He's, 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 he's there. He's, he's watching over you. He sees it. He's satisfied. He says, okay, you've got this. Let's move to the next thing. That's what he wants from us. And the older I get, the more I want to please him. The less this world is, the things of this world means anything. You know, when you're younger, you, <laughs> I, I, I laugh at Christina because she could wear out a set of tires in two weeks. She's gone. She gets in that car and she's gone. She's everywhere. You, you know, I got that Live 360 and you'll look, she'll be here. She'll be over here. She'll be there. She's gone. She's in that car every, I don't think that car, unless we're out of town, that car does not sit 24 hours without being started. Unless I go take the battery out. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's her highlight. She'll go here, she'll go there. And she, you know, with friends and all that stuff, that's the highlight, that's young. Hey, you know what I want to do now? I don't want nobody in my house. 
And my truck, if my truck sits there for 24 hours, it's because I'm happy it sits there for 24 hours. You know what I mean? Y'all ever have those days where you're like, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything. I don't want, you know. I don't want to go out here and run around all day every day on, in my car like I did when I, I did the same thing. I look out and, 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 and when I think about it, I did the exact same thing when I was a teenager. On up into my 20s. Now I'm like, no, I don't have to do that no more. When I was younger, I wasn't homebound. Now I am. You know what I'm saying. We change. We change. We all change. When you're younger, <laughs> when you're younger, usually you picked what you wanted to eat. And when you're older, you're just thankful you got something on your plate to eat. Amen? You know what I'm saying? Whenever Christina cooks something, if it's sitting on the plate, I'm going to eat it. As long as it looks okay. <laughs> if, it, if it don't look good, then, and then I give it to Rocky. That's our little puppy first. And if he doesn't kill over, then I'll eat it. All right? Uh, but no, you know what I'm saying. It, it's, it's, you know, you, you're changed. Our lives change. Well, our spirit life changes too. Because when you're young, you're wide open. You, don't, you, you hit and miss church. You do whatever you want. Don't read the Bible. But as you get older, what do you do? It's because you're growing up. You're maturing. You're maturing. That's a, and, that, and in that maturity, you allow God to guide your steps more. If that makes sense to you. The next thing I wanted to talk about is he, man let him hold your hand he says when he falls he will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is the one who holds his hand now look it said it didn't say now because uh, when he falls notice it says when he falls it didn't say if he falls because we're all going to fall we're all going to sin and come short of the glory of God. There's no way about it. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to fall. We'll all do that. But the closer you are to the Lord, the less apt you will fall headlong. Now what I mean by that is, is face plant. Y'all done that before. Y'all ever done that? Just walk around tripping and next thing you know, you got a scar or a big, what do you call it, up down your face, your nose, got your bridge of your nose and all that stuff. Y'all ever done that? Come in with a big fat lip and you, think, and you swear up down, you fail, and everybody, everybody knows your wife punched you in the face. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all never had one of those? When you, when you fall, you hit, you, you know, your face plant, and the next thing you know, you got a big lump right here. Look like a third eye. I always love this story when I tell it and when I read about it and when I think about it. When Peter said, permit me to walk on the water when Jesus was walking on the water. Y'all remember the story. And I said this before because I love it and, I, and, and it, it, it holds dear to my heart because I, 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 I try to use it in my own life. And everything. He says that when he walked out on the water, it means he was on the water, and said he noticed the storms and the waves and he started sinking and he cried out to Jesus and Jesus picked him up. Now, how close was Jesus to Peter when he picked him up? Arms went. Does that make sense? He was arm went. It didn't say, and Jesus ran over and grabbed him. No, it says and he, and he reached out and grabbed him. And he reached out, he was right there. You see, the closer you are to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you fall, it will not be as catastrophic. In other words, when we make mistakes, He will hold us up. Now, there are people who make mistakes that'll, 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 that'll last a lifetime to them. That'll be a lifetime consequence. This, you know, you, know, you make, make a mistake, you end up suffering the rest of your life for it. There are things like that. But what I'm getting at is that, that when we are close to Jesus, we understand that when we fall, we get back up. How many people are so depressed because of their past? 
How many people are so down and out because they didn't do things when they were younger that they should have done? How many people are, are, are depressed because of the way they treated people or, 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 or different things? You know, maybe cheated somebody or whatever it is. And it's haunted them. I know a lady right now that, uh, that uh, well, I lost touch with her because we moved. But she was a highly depressed lady. Came to church. Every time the doors opened, she was depressed because she never brought her oldest son when he was a child to church. And because she wasn't going to church then. And he ended up, as he grew up, on drugs. And even as an adult, he was still on drugs when I knew him stuff like that but the other two looked, had two daughters and she brought them to church but what I'm getting at she said she always said I failed him I failed. and she lived her life in depression you see this is somebody who when they fail they did not want to get up you see some people like I said earlier like to lay in their sorrows and when you want to lay in your sorrows, then you will be useless for the kingdom of God. Those of you who play sports or play to sports um, know that when somebody has a bad game, you've got to go put your arm around them, behind you. Don't worry about it. We were playing in a tournament, co-ed tournament in uh, college. Uh, intramurals. Well, it's actually a league, and then we were in the tournament. And th the guy that pitched, for some reason, could not find the strike zone. I played first, and uh, he could not. He walked four batters, five batters in a row. And the coach who was there wouldn't. And you can tell he was just getting lower and lower. I walked over and I said, take my place. And I pitched him. Well, when the inning was over, you could see him walking off like this because he let in a lot of runs. And I went over and put my arm around him. I said, who cares? It's just a game. Don't worry about it. At the end of the day, it's going to be a game. You still got classes tomorrow or Sunday or whatever, Monday or whatever. You still got classes. You still got it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You see, we can either... Stand up or lay down when things come our way. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. I like this one because in time of trouble, when we have problems, if I can't, he's our strength. He's the one that we lead. He's the one that will hold us up. He's the one that will lead us and guide us. He's the one that will keep us from falling deeper than what we already are. See, we don't have to live a defeated life. Nobody does. If you see somebody living a defeated life, it's because they chose to live a defeated life. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. A stronghold means it's almost like a... a um, a rail. You know what I'm saying? When you're walking up steps, you get that rail. It's security. It's a secure thing. That's what a stronghold is. It's... it's you know, it's got something that's got you. You've got your balance. It's got everything. He's there to hold you up. Like, like the real. He's there to hold you up. He's who we are. He's our fortress. He's everything about us. He, 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 he. Not only does he establish our ways, but he guides us, as you know, but also he holds us up. Now, I'll tell you right now, I'm, I'm thankful for Jesus holding me up. I, because we all fall, you know that, and, and everything. And it's so hard in this day and time. To get up. Do you know, as soon as something happens to somebody, the negative stuff comes out, of, uh, and, and people blister you and talk bad about you and everything. I mean, it's, it's on the Internet and stuff. You know, like, like uh, when, when the guy got shot, uh, you know, in, in the back and everything. Immediately, his criminal record came up. You know, I'm, I mean, I understand all this, and I'm not getting into all that, but I'm just saying why the man got shot seven times. I know what he was doing, and I don't know why he was doing it, but he still got shot seven times. 
you know, let the, let the justice system take care of it. Let, let the courts take care of, the, of his criminal record. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not getting into all that involved. I'm just saying that all the negative stuff comes out. But then the liberal media has him just the opposite. <laughs> they have him singing in the choir, you know. He's, a, he's the one that opens the door to church. He's the one, you know, and all that. So it's, it's, you've got to watch what's, what's out there. That's what I'm trying to say. You never know. But everything goes negative. Everything goes into, you know, if you, you know, like if you put something out there, somebody's got to be that naysayer. Somebody's got to be that name. Put something out there about Jesus and see what happens. Go on to, you know, if you're a part of YouTube or something, I got my own YouTube thing. I can put whatever I want on it and everything. Same way with others. Uh, the church has one. If you put something out there about Jesus, find out how nice everybody is. Find out just you know, how sweet they are, how kind, how loving this country is. You're going to find out they're brutal. And if you listen to it and get caught up, I was thinking about the school teachers that's in here. <laughs> the parents of some of your students are horrible. If it wasn't for the parents, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? You know, I used to say that when I was a youth pastor. If it wasn't for you parents, this would be a good job. Y'all too busy doing my job. Do your own job. Let me do my job. You know, that word because in verse 24 says he won't, he will not be hurled headlong because the Lord is holding hands. We got to stay close enough, in my opinion, the closer you are to Jesus, the more his hand is there on you. Why do we fall? And have a great fall. Because we're away from God. Remember pride comes before destruction. You know. When we are seeking the Lord. Living for him. As best as we can. Being as close to him. When we fall. He will hold us up. He will get us back up. And he will dust us off. And get us back on the path that he set for us. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we love. You know, there's no other God like this. There's no other God as forgiving as our God. God loves us so much that he not only sacrificed his son, but he sacrificed his son to a bunch of people who didn't like him. You know that we didn't we didn't even like him. Think about it. We, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were sinners, it means we weren't on his side. We were we were on the side of the devil. Christ died for us. And so with that, that's the kind of God we have. And not only that does not only does he want us on his team to be saved, not only what, but he wants us all to do the best that we can spiritually. Go back and research all the other gods. None of them do that. All of them are works salvation. We are grace salvation. For it is by grace through faith you're saved. Not of works, lest no man should boast. It's a gift of God. You see what I'm saying? All others, you've got to do all these Whatever, penance, jumping jacks, whatever you do, Hail Marys, have a Diet Coke, all that stuff. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's all about works. And if you're not good enough at the end of the day from all the works that you've done, you ain't getting in. And if you don't die a certain way, you ain't getting your 70 virgins either. Why would I want them? Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. But you see what I'm saying? God is about love. Other religions are not about God loving us. It is about, theirs is about God, them serving God to appease Him. 
to get on his right side, to be good enough. Ours is about grace, is giving our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's better than that. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and helps us, and he wants us to grow. He desires us to grow. And as he desires, he's there with us every day, every step of the way. And as we grow and as we grow, that's what he wants. You see, no other religion can call their God Father. Because no other religion is intimate like ours. Does that make sense to you? No other. You don't hear them saying, Muhammad is my God, is my Father. They, no, they talk about Allah is great, Allah is this. But they don't tell him Father. Buddha is not called Father. All these others are not called Father. We can call it because Jesus died. And when we accepted him, the Bible says we are adopted into his family as sons and daughters of the king. Now, folks, I hope this encouraged you because I needed it. <laughs> I needed this. Sometimes when I got it up there, it's really for me. and Y'all just have to sit and listen to it because I struggle just like everybody else struggles, if not more. But the whole thing is... How to live free. Let God establish your steps. Follow Him. And let Him hold your hand. Let Him hold your hand. Let's pray. Father, we thank You.